from the studios that brought you Tiny Toon Adventures, Pinky and the Brain, and E.T. Comes an animated series like you've never seen before. Meet the Warner Brothers and their Warner sister, Dot. Three siblings that will deliver labored puns, risky humor, breaking the fourth wall. Join this epic trio of crazy as they leave the water tower they call home and invade a television set near you. Coming up in today's video, we discuss the Animaniacs. Hey, 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 what's up everybody and welcome back to Macabgorium Labs presents School of Boredom, a showcase of things likely forgotten. My name is Bats and I'll be your guide today as we discuss lesson number 209, Classic Animaniacs Sing a Song of Animation Gold. Introduced around the same time as Tiny Toon Adventures in 1993, Animaniacs was another variety style collaboration between Steven Spielberg and Warner Brothers Entertainment. As far as how these characters came to be, well that's an interesting story. Well, when the series creator, Tom Ruger, was in college, he created a short film called The Premiere of Platypus Duck. And it would be this film that would be the inspiration for the Animaniacs. However, as he started wandering around the Warner Studios lot, this is where he would take notice of the water tower and he finally decided that the characters for this new show would be the Warner Brothers and their Warner sister, Dot. He then decided to use his own three sons as direct inspiration for the trio. Now I know what some of you may be thinking right now, you just said three sons, how does that explain the Warner sister, Dot? Well, it's exactly what it says she is. Let's take a look at the Warner logo. Okay, so we see the Warner Brothers logo, right? But wait, what is this? The Warner Brothers and a Dot. The Warner Brothers and their sister, Dot. You might think I'm just making this up, but according to the show's own lore, this is a canon fact. Tom Ruger took notice of the sign, and in true madman genius, thought Warner Brothers Dot. That's three. And thus the concept for the characters were complete. Now to bring them to life. Unlike his inspiration, the characters were not platypus, but in fact have a no determinable species. And throughout the series, they go out of their way to avoid giving one. Continuing with his inspiration, he dove deep into the past of the company. In fact, he would go all the way back to their roots, all the way back to the days of the original black and white cartoons. So much so that Yakko, Wacko, and Dot were designed to represent old characters from the 1930s that were locked in the Warner Tower for many years until being released in the modern day Burbank, California. And well, I think I'll let the theme song explain. So the characters would escape the water tower and run amok, causing trouble around the lot. But these were not by far the only characters that made this show. Now let's talk about the cast of Animaniacs, and there were quite a few. First up we have Yakko Warner. Yakko Alvin Warner is the oldest of the three siblings, often acting as the de facto leader or parental figure. He was voiced by the legend Rob Paulson. Next up is Wacko Warner. Wacko is the middle of the three Warners, known for being a little crazier than the other two, and aside from wearing a red baseball cap, he projects a European Beatles-esque voice that is brought to life by the wonderfully wacky Jess Harnell. And then there was Princess Angelina Contessa Luisa Francesca Banana Fana Bobesca Warner III, or more commonly known as Dot, the Warner sister, and she is the youngest of the three Warners. Dot was voiced by the always amazing Tress McNeil. As I'm sure most of you are aware, there are a bunch more characters. Over a couple hundred if my research was accurate. So for this video, I'm just going to be listing off the more prominent characters and their voice actors. If you want me to make a more in-depth video on the characters themselves, be sure to let me know in the comment section. First up is Dr. Otto Von Scratchensniff, voiced by Rob Paulson and his assistant, Heloise Nurse, or more commonly known as Hello Nurse, voiced by Tress McNeil. 
Then to help keep the group in line, they gave us Ralph the Security Guard, voiced by the amazing Frank Welker. Also voiced by Frank Welker, we had Thaddeus Plotz, or Mr. Plotz, whom is the show's version of the Warner Brothers CEO. Packing along, we have Chicken Boo, whom, believe it or not, was voiced by Frank Welker. We also have the duo of Mindy and Buttons. Mindy, a little girl, was voiced by Nancy Cartwright, and her more than loyal doggo Buttons was voiced by Frank Welker. Keeping things organized, we got the Goodfellas. But I'm funny how? I mean, funny like I'm a clown, I abuse you? What? Good feathers. Must be a typo. By attempting to keep things organized, we got the Good Feathers. Squit, Pesto, and Bobby. Squit was voiced by Maurice LaMarche. Pesto was voiced by Chick Venera. Rest in peace. And Bobby, whom was voiced by John Mariano while speaking, and in a weird twist, was voiced by Jeff Bennett while singing. Next up is one of my favorites, Slappy Squirrel, voiced by Sherry Stoner, and her nephew Skippy Squirrel, voiced by Nathan Ruger. In the final running, they gave us Rita and Runt, a cat and dog duo voiced by Bernadette Peters and Frank Walker, respectively. And finally, there was Pinky and the Brain. Pinky was voiced by Rob Paulson, and his cohort, The Brain, was voiced by Maurice LaMarche. And don't worry, I do have plans to cover the Pinky and the Brain show specifically in their own school of boredom. For now, though, with such an elaborate cast of characters, what was this show actually about? Well, Animaniacs was an animated variety show that featured separated segments featuring all of the tunes I just listed and more. Each one taking focus on stories revolving around the setting and tempo of the included characters. Animaniacs really had a lot going on. The series would run from 1993 until 1994, when it would be moved from Fox to the WB in 1995, where it would remain until 1998. In total, the show would have five seasons consisting of 99 episodes or 274 separate segments, but it wouldn't stop at just an animated series. Animaniacs would have a ton of other continuities, including, but not limited to, VHS and DVD home releases, toys, a comic book series made by DC Comics that ran from 1995 until the year 2000, with 59 issues and a couple of annual specials. Three music collections, beginning with the Animaniacs album in 1993, the Yakko's World album in 1994, and the Animaniacs variety pack that was released in 1995. And yet, it didn't stop there. We got Wacko's Wish, a direct-to-video feature-length film released on VHS in 1999 and later on DVD in 2014. And I will be covering Wacko's Wish at some point. There were also seven video games made for the Animaniacs. Animaniacs released in 1994 for the Sega Genesis, Super Nintendo, and Game Boy. Animaniacs Game Pack, released in 1997 for the PC. Animaniacs 10 Pin Alley, released in 1998 for the Sony PlayStation. Animaniacs A Gigantic Adventure, released in 1999 for PC. Animaniacs Splatball, also released in 1999 for the PC. Animaniacs The Great Edgar Hunt, released in 2005 for the Nintendo GameCube, Sony PlayStation 2, and original Microsoft Xbox. And finally, the Animaniacs Lights, Camera, Action would release in 2005 for the Game Boy Advance and the Nintendo DS. It would also end up getting a reboot in 2020, but that's not what we do here, so here's my thoughts. Animaniacs was a weird, fun, silly, somewhat disturbing, in all the right ways show that really did have a little something for everyone. From its darker humor and innuendo riddled segments. No, 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 fingerprints. I don't think so. To its whimsical songs and wide array of characters, pop culture references, and fourth wall breaks, Animaniacs was something truly special that would remain in the hearts and minds of fans for years to come. Personally, I really liked the slappy squirrel segments in Animaniacs and the parodies of popular medias at the time, but now you know what I think? I've just gotta ask. 
Were you a fan of classic Animaniacs? Who was featured in your favorite segment? Do you have a favorite Animaniacs moment or song? Have any comments or other favorite memories or stories? Did I forget to include something? Maybe I left something out or you have a suggestion for a future video or just want to drop in and say hi. Either way, I look forward to hearing from you. And with that, we've come to the end of another School of Boredom video. I've been your guide, Bats, and today we talked about lesson number 209. Classic Animaniacs Sing a Song of Animation Gold. Be sure to check back next time because you never know what we have in store. And as usual, think for yourselves. Be excellent to each other and always keep it creepy. See you in the next one. Hey, thanks for checking out our video. If you enjoyed this one and would like to see more of our weird, creepy, odd, eccentric, or strange content as soon as it comes out, please feel free to click like, subscribe, and turn on notifications for more. We'll see you later. Keep it creepy.